Hi everyone and welcome to this second installment in what I call my Simple to Complex series. The idea is that I want to explore a subject in three different levels of complexity. And this week I want to explore, well, game programming, but programming in general. Why do we call some code clean? Or why do we say there's good solution and bad solution? Why do we talk about software design patterns and all that? Well, you see, I've been a programmer for quite a long time now, and every time I have to implement a new solution for some problem or I have to code a new feature, you know, I, I try a different way of approaching the problem, I learn something, and every time I get this kind of endorphin rush. And I kind of like it. It makes you feel good when you manage to solve something quite complex. And I'm hoping with these videos that I can share this kind of joy of learning to everyone watching this. Now my goal isn't to make a several hours long video exploring all the different programming paradigm and, and software engineering concept and all that. All I want is to show some of the differences between say a small game jam project versus a small indie game that you'd want to release with a couple of your friends versus, you know, the kind of stuff you'd see in a big AAA studio where, where there's hundreds of programmers working together. Now at the first level, maybe you're a complete beginner and you just started learning to program, or maybe you're tackling a problem that you've never seen before, and so you already have your brain full just trying to break the problem into small instructions that the computer can understand. And so you shouldn't be thinking about how to make this beautiful or how to make it look clean or even resilient. No, what you're trying to do is just to get it to work first. For example, recently I've been working on a bunch of different prototypes and one of those is a small space shooter I was trying to make with some multiplayer elements. And if you look at the code, it's goddamn ugly. I mean, Everything is in the main scene. And if you look at the code for the shooting of the weapons and all that, it's all programmed inside the controls of the player character, which in the long term is just not going to scale very well. But what I needed is to get to a playable prototype as quickly as possible so that I could try it out with my friends and see if it was fun. And for this, I even implemented some multiplayer tutorial I found online and I try to hack it inside what I currently have. So there are a couple of different trial and error, like the way every multiplayer stuff is implemented is not the same throughout the code base because I was trying a bunch of different ways of doing it. So it, yeah, it, it's pretty ugly. And the, the problem is that if I ever wanted to push this further, I probably wouldn't be able to because it's just such a mess that adding anything has become such a pain that I'm better off just starting over from scratch. But it did get me the prototype I wanted so I can try something and I can try it with my friends and we could see that, you know, there was something, but it's maybe not exactly what I had in mind. So I just let this one go and I tried something else. And so that's where the second level comes in, because once you've done your prototype and you're trying to maybe create more content or polish and you're running into all sorts of problem because you've built yourself inside a very, very small cage and you can't get away from it and you kind of have to start over again. And don't get me wrong. At any level, you run into this kind of cage problem where every solution you implement isn't perfect and you always run into situation where this cage is kind of preventing you from doing what you want. And it's, it's, it's a part of programming. You can't have a system that's perfect. But you can plan ahead and try to make it so that it'll accommodate most of the problems you'll encounter. And that's what you do at the second level for example, in another one of the prototypes I've started recently, I kind of liked where it was going, so I decided to take it to another level. So I had something working where I could build a space factory. I could drop miners on asteroids and I could mine them and I could put them into some kind of smelters that would generate 
iron bars and stuff like that and I could craft stuff from this. I decided to push it a little bit further. So the first thing I started is taking out stuff from the main scene, moving them into their own sub scenes, and then starting to think about how I wanted to organize my data. Instead of hard coding everything into like a GD script, I decided to move things into JSON and you know, try to make my systems more generic. Actually, I took a bunch of stuff from Solar Rogue that I knew already worked well for my game and I tried to re-implement that and upgrade them to work with this new prototype I was working on. And honestly, this took me several weeks where absolutely nothing changed. Even some of the features that were already in the game, in the prototype, I kind of threw them out because they weren't working with the new system I was implementing yet. But because of planning ahead and from what I learned from the prototype, I managed to make something that now allow me to create new recipe, add new items in the game in a matter of seconds by just editing a couple of JSON files, which takes a lot of inspiration from what I learned when I was making Solar Rogue. So as you can see, at the second level, I'm starting to think more ahead and I'm starting to plan things and to organize things in a way that will allow me to grow. And here comes level three. And that's right. Level three isn't just about pushing more of design architecture, software, engineering pattern and all that, but a lot about dealing with just the complexity of having hundreds of people working on the same project. That means that you're going to have to add team leads, you're gonna to have to break down your software maybe in different components so that several smaller teams can work individually on those components. For example, if you have an animation system and your character has like a dozen animation, and maybe you're fine with just a script that has a couple of if else to decide which animation to play. But uh, look at a game like Elden Ring or something like that, that has hundreds of animation for each individual separate characters in the game. You just, you can't manage that with just a bunch of if else. So you need a whole system just to manage this. And that means a whole architecture and you have to solve a whole bunch of problems and you make it generic and all that. But that means that just like at the level three of economy I mentioned in my previous video, you're going to have to deal with the interconnection of those system. And that's where it gets really complicated in a big project. You're gonna need programmer dedicated to the tooling and we're making the system work and supporting the infrastructure. And you're gonna need people responsible for deploying those smaller projects so that the other teams can work with those small projects without having to know how everything inside works because you just can't have someone know everything about the whole system, it's just too complicated. So you need to have specialists. But not only that, you need even like documentation because with a hundred people, you can be guaranteed that a bunch of them are gonna arrive in the middle of the project and you want them to get up to speed as quickly as possible. But it also means that some people that were there from the beginning with all their knowledge will suddenly go up and leave. And so you don't want them to leave with all the important knowledge. So you need confluence, you need tickets, you need the Jira and all these management things just so that people working on the project can keep working efficiently without wasting a whole bunch of time. And when you're working on a big project, you can be expected to implement a whole bunch of quality of life features. That means, you know, having dynamic key remapping, maybe graphical options. You have to support a whole bunch of different system in Mac, iOS, Apple, PC, anything. And then you have translation and all of these kind of things that might seem like really small details actually take a huge amount of time to implement. In Solar Rogue, I tried to add a couple of, uh, you know, quality of life feature. I implemented French translation and Japanese translation, part of it. And then I tried to release on iOS, Android and PC all at the same time. But seriously, that was really hard. And I kind of regret not doing just PC first and then doing the other platforms later. And that's why there's always a kind of balance to strike between straightforward, direct, quick implementation of something and a more long-term considered generic approach, if you will. And to be honest, I've met people who have trouble switching between those different state of mind, if you will. I've seen people freezing up because the problem is so complex that they can't think of the perfect solution that covers everything. And so they never start doing actually anything. And these people, they just need to start messy and then clean it up as they go. 
And I've seen people do the exact opposite. They'll just implement something as quickly as they can. And if it does what it's supposed to do, then fine, it's good enough. But then, you know, they ignore the fact that there might be other use cases that are not going to work with their solution or that maybe some other programmer are going to have to deal with their really bad, smelly piece of code. They just don't care. And that's why I think it's important to be able to switch between like making really messy code to start something and then, you know, being able to come back later and clean it where it's appropriate. And that's going to be it for this week. Really, eventually, I'd like to do more video like that about animation, about 3D programming, about 3D art, and all sorts of different aspects of game development. But it's going to have to wait until next time. So see you all in my next episode. Bye!